Yo, Z God, aka Story Lord, aka Z Boy, you heard? We moving out here. We ain't playing no games. Brownsville, Brooklyn is in the building. 11212 Mob. We taking over everything. You heard? I'm dropping new installments of that fire all month long. You heard? No games being played, man. Get at me, man. Hey, yo, check my rap track record. It's disgusting, you heard? If you want to collab with me, you want to get on a song with me, you a producer, you a rapper, get at me, you heard? Email me business over. <laughs> Hey, yo, make sure you saw part one to this movie, you heard? LAZ, Brownsville, Brooklyn, man, I mean, make sure you go to that new and recent episodes playlist where you will see every episode, every new episode in order. You know how I'm old. You know how I'm old. Tyson man, Daryl Bomb. I just see a big light skinned nigga with a big ass chain on his neck on the other line, like, yo, yo, who who named Ron Dude? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? I'm Ron Dude. Wow, what's up? He like, he grabbing his chain, like, yo, you want this shit? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah, I want that shit, yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And so when, when, you know, when niggas got me for that chain, I was robbing everybody. Like I said, OG Mac, he came through. I didn't know him at the time. I came to Little Library. I think I had a shooter or two with me. OG Mac was in adults at the time. I don't know how he pulled off from adults to the adolescent. I might even got that confused. I don't know, because my memory is kind of fucked up, to be honest with you, because I smoke weed. But you know, to be honest with you, bro, but I, the, I know this for a fact, and it's a true story. The first time I ever seen OG Omar, OG Mac, he was in the lower library with a whole bunch of jury on his neck. I looked at him one time and turned my head. I said, oh, I'm getting him. Soon as he be the library, I ain't know who he was and I ain't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? At that point, it was maybe five, six months into after niggas had robbed me. I done robbed so much shit that I was robbing every fucking body. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So when I seen that, I'm like, oh, he get me. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So I turned my head, I got a little library book. I'm looking at the little library book, looking at that shit. And I'm saying to myself, damn, why the fuck this nigga keep looking at me? Because I feel him just watching me. He don't know me. I don't know him. So why the fuck? All I did was glance and turn my head. I know I didn't give him no indication because I wasn't that type of nigga. You gonna get the indication when I'm coming for it. You feel me? So I'm like, damn, why this nigga keep looking at me? Sure enough. I, I, it was too long of a time of him staring at how to look up. So I looked up. As soon as I looked up, he was on me. He, he, he was he locked eyes with me. I, I'm like, I, I looked up. He was like, yo, what the fuck you looking at? I'm like, what? Looking at? I ain't homie. I ain't even looking at you, bro. Because I know how that little library was. You can't do shit in that library. You feel me? So I'm like, bro, what? I'm not even looking at you, bro. What you talking about? He jumped up, threw a chair at me, bro. Right? I'm like, yo, this nigga pulled. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this nigga pulled the mad stunt. Police nigga came right to me. Jones, my name was Melvin Jones on the island at the time. Yo, Jones, he fucked out my little library. <laughs> I don't know what this silver tongued ass nigga told that nigga to stay in the lab because once he kicked me out, my little two shooters came with me. So we in the hallway like this. Soon as that nigga come out, his ass is out. Word. I was dropping that hallway for like hours. That nigga never came out. I'm like, yo, how the fuck this nigga throw a chair at me and he's there and kick him out? You feel me? I'm like, wow, this nigga pulled the mad stunt. I think, I think maybe like two weeks go by. I seen the nigga in the mess hall on the line. Two upper in the adolescent house with John Rambo. Now John Rambo is a childhood friend of mine. He went to school with me. I know he used to live in Brooklyn. I don't know, you know, he went to Bronx. You know, they turned him out. 
I, I, I think that nigga was born in Brooklyn. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I see that nigga in motherfucking on the island, and he was on some Bronx shit. I'm like, yo, I know you from kids, nigga. We out of fuck. I ain't even know how that yeah, happened. Yeah, I got to so, make a correction. My fault. I got to make a correction because I said on one of the other episodes I dropped that son is originally from Tilden, but he originally from LH. It's LH that exactly. son is originally from, exactly. and he went to he yeah, went he to the five. Me. He went to two seventy five. He was in my class in two seventy five. You heard? Yeah, I went you to two seventy five too. Me too, Conrad. Me, Bob. That was my school. The t- the, the 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 principal used to carry a, a hammer, Mister Fletcher. <laughs> that 275 shit was real right. That shit was They kicked me out of there And then I went to Marcus That's how I'm well rounded To be honest with you And like I said I always was pro real dude So I, You know I met a lot of dudes man From From all over man That you know That You know That you know I came to respect And that came to respect me Like if I say a name It ain't You know what I'm saying Like I know them We know each other You feel me So mm. You know like you know, like Omar, OG Mac, you know what I'm saying? He had testified to it, you know, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to clown nobody or nothing. It just is what it is. Like, I don't know what he told that officer, but he ain't come out that library. We was in the hallway waiting for his ass. It might not been for an hour, but we definitely was waiting. And um, and then when I did see him, he was in the house with John Rambo. And John Rambo was like, dude, what's up with you, my man? Yo, this is my man. I was like, oh, bro, that's your man. That shit ain't about nothing. So, you know, that shit was good from there. And then maybe two weeks after that, we was in Mar 4 at the time. He came down to my house, Mar 4. He had he had a very nice ring on it. He ain't come down like no sucker. But like I said, I already told John Rambo that. So it wasn't nothing. I came to the Seagate. I seen the mouth there. I told the police. Yo, that's my man. You know, he coming on our side. And he came over like a G. He, you know, a lot of motherfuckers was hesitant to come in Mall 4. That shit was crazy, man. You know, it was, you know, the fucking ceiling was leaking, water and shit. Motherfucking phones always fucked up. We got to cut a nigga to get the fucking niggas to fix the phone. You know, <laughs> stupid shit. Yo, water, bro, stupid shit. We was, that house was fucking crazy. That was the house I was telling you we used to make motherfuckers go through the soul train line. That's when you got to run through everybody throwing hammers at you and all that shit. Niggas <laughs> trying to knock your head off and all. And if you go through that, then you can stay. Shit like that. We used to take sugar packs and make them fight inside the sugar if you break the sugar everybody kick up in your ass you know what i'm saying we was like we was just curious kids man doing kid shit man you know what i'm saying like you know it was real shit though some of the shit was real some dudes was getting their heads blown off you know what i'm saying they wearing scars you know what i'm saying that you know you know that they got you know from back then so the shit you know you you know it was it was real shit too man but it was a lot of shit was just over dumb shit you know what I'm saying? A lot of dumb shit, bro. A lot of dumb shit. Like, that shit with me, I was just, man, I was, man, I ain't even gonna front it. That shit sparkled after that, man, I wanted it, man. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Yo, I was doing that shit so much. You know Homo. You know Homo. Tyson, man. Daryl Bomb. I met him in jail. I know he's older than me. And, you know, I heard a lot of good things about him in the street as far as being official. You know, dudes talk about him in books all on the internet. You know, they be talking about how I'm, how I'm official. And, you know, a, a close friend of mine, shout out to Miz. That's who wrote Bulldog, Crow, Bishop. You know what I'm saying? Miz, that was his man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pound Carmo, T-Rock. You know what I'm saying? But Hamo came through, he was already up north in 91. This could have been the end of 90 or the beginning of 91. But he was already up north, but he came down for something. You know what I'm saying? He must have went on a visit and got a big ass chain and a piece and shit. And I, I didn't even know that nigga, bro. But my, like I said, rest in peace. You know, my name was ringing so much for doing that shit. Me, we was, I think I was in Mall 8 at the time with Shoe Shine and Kojak and them. Shout out to Shoe, shout out to Kojak. I, I was, we come in the mess hall. I just see a big light skin nigga with a big ass chain on his neck on the other line. Like, yo, yo, who, who name Ron Dude? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? I'm Ron Dude. Wow, what's up? He like, he grabbing his chain like, yo, you want this shit? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah, I want that shit, you 
I start walking over to the nigga and shit. And you know the police, you know the police, the police know. What made him shit. say that though? Because he just heard what you was in there he doing? He heard about the shit I was doing. I told you, bro. Like, yo, real shit. Um, What's son name, Dan? That's, I think, Head. You know Head from Notion Avenue? Head got cut for some shit I had did, man, one day. I think I robbed the Spanish dude, man. We robbed the Spanish dude and shit, man. And, um, and, um, and then they popped it. They thought I was in Mar 3 Low at the time. So they house was passing the dude house. And they popped on the house. And tag got cut in that shit. Well, I was, yo, bro. Yeah, bro. I was, I was, I'm telling you, once they robbed me for my chain, man, I was on go with any jury, and man. You said that was in a mess hall when he said that? Yeah, word. He just word. That shit. That shit. Let me know that my shit was ringing for real. Every, everybody, like, said, like he tried to say it in front of everybody so everybody could hear it. He, that's what he did. You know. That's why I say, yo, Hamo. I don't know what everybody say. They can say what they want about Hamo, but Hamo was a gangster. That's the type of shit he was doing. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, and, and you know, I, that was the type of the shit. Later on, you know what I'm saying? The type of shit that I would do. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, like you know. Let the nigga, everybody robbing niggas for jury. There's a dude named so and so in here robbing niggas for jury. I just went on the dance floor and got a big ass chain. What I'm gonna do? Wait for him to come get me? Nah, I'm gonna look for him. You know what I'm saying? He said, yo, he said, yo, who Ron do? I was like, yo, I'm Ron do. What up? You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, um, you want this? I was like, yeah, I want that. I started walking towards him. A bunch of, you know, the little adolescents I was in the house with, they started walking towards him with me. The police, yo, yo, y'all get back in the fucking line, you know, shit like that or whatever. And, you know, while I was, as I was walking towards him, he started walking towards me. So the police was like, yo, big man, yo. Like I said, he was drunk. I think Hamo had to pro probably had me about 10 years. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, he probably had me about 10 years or, or, or seven or eight at least. But like I said, he coming down from up north. He was big as a motherfucker at the time. His weight was up. He was up north working out and all that. You know, you feel me? Yeah, it was a big ass cable or some shit with a big ass dinner plate or some shit. It was some big shit, some nice shit. I think it was too big to, for something that you could have up north. Cause I had a chain damn near my whole time up north. I don't see the biggest shit up north. I ain't seen no shit like that. But but nevertheless, whatever it was, he was like, nigga, you want this shit? Come get it. When I came for it, the police was like, yo, uh, 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 uh. And then, you know, they went to him, yo, big man, yo, step back. They put their hands on the nigga. You know what I'm saying? How I'm gonna slap the nigga hand off like yo, don't put your fucking hand on me. Word, I remember that. And Who, then the police man, or, or somebody in the crib? To the police. To the police. He told the nigga, yo, don't put your fucking hand on me. The nigga went to put the with the push Hamo back again, I'm gonna drop him. Bill, knock that nigga for fuck, put that nigga on his back pockets, you heard? Word. Mm. Put the nigga on his back pockets. When he put the nigga on his back pockets, boom, the rest of the police rushed him. You know what I'm saying? And they, you know, they was, you know, they, they rushed the nigga. You know what I'm saying? So we was like, we was kids, but you know what I'm saying? We still knew the fucking rules. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that shit ain't right. So we start, you know what I'm saying? Grabbing police. Niggas start throwing trays and shit at them. Nigga, get the fuck off them. You know what I'm saying? A little mini riot. So they got the fuck up off the nigga pretty much and just, you know, they took him out. They took all of us. I think Shoe, I don't know if Shoe got, uh, um, got, grabbed up in that shit but they grabbed me up they grabbed a few other niggas up and they put us all in the wild me he was in the wild me next to us but he first they put us in the wild me they put him in a hospital to be honest with you you know what i'm saying because they fucked his arm up you know what i'm saying so he had a little sling on his arm he had a little eye jammy and shit they brought him in a, in a in a pen next to us and you know i asked him like yo bro you know he was like, yeah, you know, that's he introduced. He said, yo, nah, my name Hamo. You know, I heard about you, you know what I'm saying? I heard you was robbing niggas in the building, you know what I'm saying? I, I just wanted to let you know I was in the building. <laughs> this is like, yo, know, this thing crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, yo, I ain't think, man, that shit ain't about that, man. You good? I think I'm like, yo, I'm good, man. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 we ain't do no more talking, you heard? Mm. But now, but now, I had a cousin 
Well, that shit gonna be in the book, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it went a little further with Hamo than it was supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? You know, because of, you know, I pretty much wasn't sweating that shit. Me and him ain't never get into nothing, but I'm gonna put that in my book, man, about this incident that he got into with my, my, my cousin behind that shit, man. Word, you know what I'm saying? But um, me and Hamo wound up meeting each other up north after that shit. We was in Southport together, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, me and him got kind of close, man. We got kind of close. That was before he came home and got killed, you heard? Check this out. I came up north in 91, right? Hmm. Uh, and that island shit I, was 89, you said, with Hamo? That that incident happened in either 90 or 91. I, th- I can't remember exactly when he came down or when that happened, you heard? But it was either the end of 91, the beginning of 90, some, somewhere around that time, you heard? Mm. And um, I went up north in 91, I think March or April and shit. And they sent me to Ulster. The first day, I think it was the first day I got there, I, I went up and a, a, a dude had in the day room over the chair over the TV with a chair. I hit him with, with a chair, hit him upside the head with a chair over the TV and shit in the day room and they put me in a box in Ulster. You know what I'm saying? When I was in a box that weekend, they called me for a visit. And my moms came to see me and shit. And she was like, yo, a big ass envelope. A jury came to the crib, you heard? I said, word. She was like, yeah. She said, yeah, it had your name on it in Rikers Island. I said, oh, okay, okay, yo. And you know, just keep all that shit. But, uh, you know, that shit was all the jury that over the years, right? When you get in an incident in a house, like say if you cut somebody or somebody else might cut somebody, or we might have a fight in the hallway. Like for instance, one day, it was all during the Brooklyn and Bronx shit. I think it was me or uh, uh, forgot who else from Brooklyn. And it was Frazier and a few other... I think it was N.A. and somebody else from Brooklyn. It was Frazier and a few other dudes from the Bronx. We all were squaring off in the hallway in a four building, just swinging razors and shit at each other. Some kids, some little bullshit. I don't think nobody got cut in that incident. But the police, when the squad came and broke it up, had a bunch of jewelry on. They took all my jewelry from me. That was their way of getting back at us when we do shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So out of all the incidences that I might have got in or that type of incident where they took jewelry from me or they just came in the house to search and just get on some bullshit one day and just take jewelry from me, out of all the shit they took, I used to think they was, they was keeping our shit, but they used to give us little slips for the shit. I used to throw them shits away. Like, I really didn't know at the time how that shit went, but it was going into our personal property. So when I went up north, before I went up north, I went to social service. The lady was like, yo, if you got any personal property, where you want to send it to? I gave him my mom's address. So when I got up north and she came to see me, all that jury, they sent it to the crib. Burr. And it was a bunch of shit, bro. My brother was like, nigga, all type of shit, bracelets, rings, all type of shit, bro. Word. Official shit, too. Nice shit. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, huh? That's crazy. They kept it official like that. Yeah, all that shit was in my property, man. Word. They gave all that shit to my moms, man. Word, they sent all that shit there. I thought, I thought all that shit was gone, but that, but that's really was was wrong through in a nutshell, bro. To keep it honest, to be honest with you, like I said, like every house I went to, I had phone time. I wore my jewelry. I stayed fly. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying like my co-defendant was really on some more trying to stay fly shit than me because he was a booster nigga in the street back in the days and he was just always on that fly shit. So that's what he was known for. He was one of the first ones out of all of us that actually bagged one of the COs that was working on the island and actually the CO that he bagged. I used to shoot game at her and she was receptive to it, but I ain't know I could take it that far. So when he got the number, I was tight. That made me go hard too. I ain't gonna blow my shorty up, but I I wound up bagging somebody too. And she she hung out with me for a little while when I was up north and all that. She was sending me shit and all that. But like I said, I was a wild child, man. I wound up doing the whole seven years. So she cut out. You talking about? You talking about Moosey? 
Yeah, Moosey was a fly nigga. No, that he was the one who had the broad. Yeah, he was the first one that bagged uh, 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 out of all of us that I know of, unless somebody else that kept it quiet. But he wasn't keeping it quiet. Everybody knew that was his short, you know. Mm. He wound up going home and moving in with her too. Mm. Yeah. And and me, you know, I had shorty too. I had shorty too. I bagged a nice shorty. I was I was what 17, 18. She was like 27, 28. That was the you know what I'm saying? And when I went up north, fruit, fruit trying to shoot at her. You know they call fruit my twin. Shout out to fruit, man. I told fruit Quan I was gonna do this. He, you know, he passed me a number. But um fruit, yeah, I heard. That you was shooting at my shorty when I went up north because she told me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fruit came through on some bullshit. You know what I mean? And you know, Fruit, they say me and Fruit is twins, man. So, you know, it wasn't hard for him to say, you know, we had the same type of swag. So it wasn't hard for, for, for her to even mention him, let me know that she was feeling him, you know? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, fruit. But fruit came through on go too, you know. I heard a lot about fruit too. But fruit came. He came through when I was, you know, when I when I was younger. He came through for, when he was younger. He came through for a little while, and then he came. He went home, and then he came back through. When he came back through, I was gone. Hmm. That's when Mano was there. That's when uh, Mo Dog came back through. Mo Dog. Uh, was cold and finished with Mano and uh, Germ came back through, and a few other dudes I heard was was still there, man. Word, they ain't go home for that long neither. But that was the temperature back then. It was it was it was wild, bro. I heard Hook off talking about three lower, bro. Man, that shit was crazy, man. Let's even think about that shit, bro. It was crazy. They used to bring dudes down there to get them to come in the house, and dudes would refuse. Like, yo, I'm not going in there. And that, you see, it's not like now. Now a lot of dudes is gang banging. If you blood, you can't go in the crib house. It's all right for you to refuse the house. When I was when I was coming through, man, it, ain't, it ain't no refu- I go where they put me, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no refusing nothing. I heard dudes talking this Brooklyn and Bronx shit. I'm gonna give you a for instance, right? Uh, 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 the dude that I that I was, right? Um, at one point, all of us was in Mar Three Lower. Me, Ja, Ho, Cool Out, Ho Jack, few other dudes, Moosey. We was doing so much shit. The superintendent put a um the warden pretty much put a separation order on us. Like, yo, you you five, six dudes, y'all motherfuckers can't be in the same house no more. Together no more. Y'all cause too much hat. So they brought us all into the bullpens and we we were sitting in there with our property until they found another house for all of us to go go to. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They sent one dude back here, one dude over here, one dude over there. Everybody had houses to go to. Me, they was going to send me to Mod 8. They was going to send my little man, Ja, which is who's a grown-ass man now, Ja. That's my bro. He be looking out for me, Ja, one of the months from Bad Style here, Fishu. Ja, they was going to send Ja to 2 Upper. Now, at the time, to be honest with you, 2 Upper was a Bronx house. And the Bronx and Brooklyn shit was in full effect. You feel me? So Job was like, what? I ain't going to that motherfucker. You know what I mean? And you know what I'm saying? I ain't take nothing from Job because, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a smart move being from Brooklyn going up there. But me seeing that and, you know, the uh, being who I was, my heart was always bigger than my chest. You know what I'm saying? I told the police, all right, y'all got me and Marty. Y'all got him and two upper. You put him and Marty and you put me and two upper. You feel me? And I went up there. You feel me? Now I knew that was a Bronx house, and they ain't don't, don't make it seem like you know what I'm saying. I, I thought I was gonna go up there and take over that shit. You know what I'm saying? But I, I knew what it was, and I wasn't scared. So when I went in, it was a Spanish nigga on the phone. I said, "Yo, bro, let me get that jack." He got off the jet like, "Yo," so I said, "No," I said, "Yo, let me get that jack." He was a scary nigga anyway. It was it was it was morning time, so you know he was just one of them probably a herb or something that was just, you know, niggas let rock in the morning. You feel me? He got off the phone. You know, back then, the phones, you could take the receiver off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
So I took the receiver off. I put it in my back. None of these niggas do. I was even in the house yet. I just came in the house. It was two up in cell. So when you first come through, the phone is right there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I took the phone as soon as I came through. Like, yo, let me get that. Boom, I put it in my back pocket. And then I went in the day room. Prince was in there. Prince, my man, too, now. Prince was in there. It was a Gargamel. I heard him talk about Gargamel was in there. There's a few other dudes was in there. Shout out to Gargamel, too. He official. You know what I'm saying? All this shit is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know the story. I went up in there with the phone. I had a razor in my hand. And, you know, they wasn't, you know what I'm saying? They definitely ain't back down. They locked the day room door on me. But none of them niggas wanted to get cut. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Like, so I was swinging a razor and just keeping them up off me or whatever. And Gargamel got too close. I had the phone in the other hand. He got too close. I smacked him with the phone. Bam! Split his shit in the middle. Like a nice little split on his head before the police came in there and broke it up. They broke it up. They put all of us in the cells. I'm telling Gargamel, like, yo, bro, you supposed to know better because you, you know what I'm saying, you was my man. But, I, you know, because I was fucking with Gargamel. I never was on no real Brooklyn and Bronx shit. But I'm like, yo, how you get up on me like that? You you know, he was in front of me or whatever. But, you know, and, 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 and you know, they call it down. I'm like, man, you know, so you know, whatever. When we come out with the police, they knew what time it was. So they just came, yo, you know, pack the shit. I don't want to go nowhere, I told them. But they was like, yo, pack Pack the shit you out of here. So they packed me up and moved me to Mod Nah anyway, but they moved me on the other side. You know what I'm saying? From from job. But that's the type of shit I was doing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just just to be doing it. Like, like it wasn't no it wasn't no rhyme or reason to this shit. I wasn't looking for no props. I ain't looking for no props with this shit now. But that's who I was, man. I was a, I was a little fighting motherfucker. A rumbling motherfucker. That's all I was. And I kept a smile on my face when I was doing it. I never was, I never used to walk around with no mean face. A lot of dudes would tell you, man, they, you know, back then I kept a smile on my face, man, always. Some said it was an evil smile, but it was just me, man. It was recreation for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my element. Because at the time, like, I came up in the sports and I was real, I always was active. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, fighting, like I said, I came in the DFY and then I got bullied. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, from Brown, from Brownsville. You know, my older cousins, is you, I came up under you, my born son, and the, these niggas is tough. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I came up under dudes like Alfie. I was in, I was in, I was in, you know, like DFY with like dudes like Alfie, man, from Tanam Boy. This slow, this thing, you know, was like my son. I think my son died when he was like 15. Like we was together when we was like 13. Like he one of the only dudes. Like I looked in his eyes and I ain't see no fear about nothing, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like when I when I met dudes like that. I knew the difference between dudes that play crazy, dudes that really is crazy. You understand what I'm saying? And that's pretty much the difference. Dudes that play crazy and dudes that really is, they really don't, they really is crazy. For the most part, when you say crazy, I, I mean just dudes that really don't got no fear. The dudes that I met like that, that really didn't have no fear, all of them is dead. They dead already. You understand what I'm saying? They, and they died young. You understand what I'm saying? For those of us that had a healthy amount of fear, we still hit. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? It, it's those is the, the those is that that healthy amount of fear is the it, is the is the is what kept us out of them situations where we really would have lost our lives. Because the fist, the, the, the flesh is weak, bro. If anybody get that shit twisted, then then you won't get twisted. Is anybody get that's the Brownsville motto, ABG. Anybody could get it. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I just laughed at all these dudes that's running around acting like they tougher than the world. Nah, bro, you like me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't tougher than nobody, but ain't nobody tougher than you. You feel me? I just, you know, love the way I came up because the time I came, I look at these young dudes now, and I just, you know what I'm saying, I, I feel for them because they missing out on a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm from Van Dyke Projects in Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? I had cousins from Langston Hughes that was official. What that made me do is 
go to Langston Hughes and meet them and see how they was moving over there. You know what I'm saying? And then from going to school with dudes from Tilden, I was in Tilden, going to camp from dudes with dudes from, you know, Seth Lowe, Howard. I was all over my projects. And then from there, I was all over my borough. And then when I got knocked, I was I was meeting dudes from all the other boroughs, but you know that's the difference from the the, the state and the feds. With my man's and the feds, they was meeting dudes that you know the, the official ones. They was meeting dudes international from different states. But being that I did so much time in the New York State penitentiary and I was official, I just met all the dudes that's official that's from New York, from all the boroughs. You know what I'm saying? And so so that was the was what what was genuinely unique about me and being in all these prisons like Clinton and you know after the adolescent shit you know when I when I when I actually went upstate and I grew up and you know I started meeting grown men and you know I started learning you know about life and I started reading a few books and and, and I opened my eyes you know what I'm saying about the ignorance of it all it just amazed me. And now to be at the age that I am and to be able to look back at this shit, it's fascinating, bro. So I'm definitely putting, I definitely want the world to check for my book, which is called Arrested Development Dysfunction. And it's about grown ass boys, man. You know, I hear Fuquan talk about from boys to men. And um, it's real, man. You know the shit that we, you know that we, with that we went through as far as arrested development. A lot of us, a lot of us is is experiencing things at 40, 50 years old that we should have experienced when we was twenty and thirty. You know, that's a fact. But, and, 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 and those places we was put at as adolescents, man, them shit psychologically scarred us for life, man. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. So. Whether you know, cause I I think about that. I say, yo, you know, we all grown forties, pushing fifties, you know, and we all talking about um Rikers Island shit and adolescent shit. But really, bro, it's therapy for real because we are psychologically scarred from what we was going through. Like like T Bone was talking about um how he was stressed when he was in the box for the first time in the, in the bing for the first time at 16 17 but this is why that fact. shit is outlawed now because that Yo, shit Conrad, is psychologically shit. scarring from 17 from the age of 17 to 39 i spent all my summers in the penitentiary really all my years but i say all my summers because the last summer I had was 1989, and then the next summer I had was 2012. Because I came home for that brief period in 1996 to 1997. I came home in December. I got knocked in May, right before the summer hit. And I did 15 years from there. And, and you know, an interesting, an interesting uh, thing that it's going to be in my book is when I got knocked for the 15 years, I was in HDM. I think I was about to go to trial or I had just blue trial. And I looked on the TV and I seen DMX and and um, camera. I think it was a DMX and camera video. And I said, oh, shit, Earl, that was my man, bro. Good friend of mine. You heard from yeah, that was on the island? No, in DFY, we was in YDC3 together. When I came home from Tryon, they put me in YDC3 in the um, in a, in a it's like a boys youth home and um, on Carroll Street, across the street from Mega Evers. Shoe Shine was in there. That's when I first met Shoe. That's when I met a dude named M1, a uh, Spanish guy named Charles Villafane. He was from Flatbush, um, Panama. It was a few um, dudes that, you know, turned out official that I met later on in life, too, and we uh, continued our relationship. But uh, 
DMX came while we was already there. I was there already. When he came in, it's the, it's the rest of the story. When he came in, I, you know what I'm saying? Me and him had a fight. That's how we wound up getting to know each other. I put that in my book, man, about that, man. Me and X, Earl. But when I seen him in HDM, bro, you know, because after, after we had a fight, we got kind of close, to be honest with you. And um, I was taking taking him to Brooklyn, all that. DMX wasn't no sucker. Back then, he really wasn't messing with the drugs like that. We was all young back then, so I can't tell you what he did, but I can tell you about passion, real shit. And this is what, like I said, to be the age that I'm in now and to be able to look back on my life and everything that happened, it just amazes me on some of the shit, you know, that you know, that I see it's like, like with him, like, like when I met him, the reason, you know what I'm saying? We had, well, I put that in a book. I don't want to give away everything, but, but, but let me get back to passion. He was one of the most passionate people I ever seen at the time with rhyming. You heard? He used to rhyme for me all the time when we got close. He had a story that he used to rhyme about him and his man in the street. His man got killed. I loved it, that rhyme. He never made that rhyme into a record. I never, but if, if I would have got to talk to him, I would have asked interesting why he never made that shit into a rhyme. I loved it, that shit. He used to spit it for me all the time, but real talk, bro. He was more passionate about rhyming than anybody I met at the time. And at the time, I considered myself a rapper because rap come from our era. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting now that, you know, you got 50, 55, even 60 year olds. You understand what I'm saying? That, you know, rap started in our era, so we still interested in listening to it. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. With the, it can't right. be like that with no era before us because right. it started in ours. You understand what I'm saying? And this is why you could tell that this music is going to last forever. You understand what I'm saying? Because it started with the kids and the kids is grown now and the kids still want to hear it. Yep. You got grandfather. You got grandmothers. Kids. Yep. You got grandmothers and grandfathers. It's from our era. Yep. You got grandmothers and grandfathers that they grew up off of rap. They and that's why it's rap. still a market for adult rap. But that's what we gotta. That's what we gotta show the industry. Also, that it's still a market for brothers like T Bone. You understand? And whoever else, Killer. I know Killer used to rap. Whoever else, they need to get an old school group. Yeah, now to that's be honest a fact. with you, because it's still a market. We ain't making a rap for these young dudes unless they want to hear the Jews that we got to spit. If they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. But I definitely want to hear what brothers like T-Bone and them got to say because it's relevant. That's right. It's a grown man's game. If you really want to be honest, is is putting the, the, the hands of hip hop, it's putting it in the young dude's hands that fucked the game up. Because they only interested in making money or... You know, to be nefarious, you know, to have to, you know, to look at it in a nefarious way. They probably just want to destroy yeah, the culture it ain't enough through the message in it. that they can get the young boys to spit. Yeah, it ain't enough jewels in it because dudes is young and they ain't really, they ain't really learned too many life lessons yet. And I mean, they ain't really, they ain't really lose too much yet. Experience is everything, bro. You know? You, when you when you speak it from experience, you speak it you, you 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 speak it from experience. When you only twenty years old, you don't have that much experience. That's what I got over you, young bro. You understand what I'm saying? I got you know damn it thirty years over you. Damn. You feel when I was twenty, I ain't get that. So when the dude forty came at me, yo bro, let me the fuck you gonna tell me if I some if I looked at him. And he didn't measure up to what I thought, you know, where a motherfucker supposed to be at 40. I ain't want to hear that shit. But it, maybe he can't tell me what to do, but he can tell me what not to do. He still got 20 years over of experience over. You feel me? Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and, you know, that's what I want these young brothers to get, man, because it's a jewel I came across when I was in jail, man. You know, if, uh, 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 a man that learn from his own mistakes is a wise man. But a man that learn from the mistakes of others is extraordinary. You feel me? 
if I could take your shit, if, if you could just tell me not to touch, the, the, don't touch the stove because it's hot and I never got to touch that shit and I listen and never touch that shit because I trust and believe in what you say and you give me correct information, then you could save me a world of pain. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But for most of us, we got to touch the stove to learn for ourselves. To realize that, nah, that shit ain't to be touched no more. You feel me? And I get that. It's nothing wrong with it because, you know, self-experience is the best experience. But like I said, those that can learn from the experience of others is extraordinary. Those be the ones that make it somewhere that others don't make it to. You feel me? And that's what I'm trying to get these young dudes to, to, to see now. Like, yo, bro, I was caught up. In that, in the mentality that, oh, br- um, brawn over brains. When it's actually brains over brawn, it's cool to be, it's cool to be smart now. So if you got a brain, use that motherfucker, man, because it's gonna get you farther than your body will. Mm. See, they just all pulled out knives. They were swinging the knives. I'm swinging the razor, and in the midst of me trying to get not to get stabbed or whatever and trying to keep this stupid nigga that's handcuffed to me from running up the stairs because it ain't nowhere to go. I'm like, hey. The first time I had to lay up on Rikers Island was, um, was in 89. Was in 89, yep. What you came through for, a robbery? I had a, I had a temp robbery um, that I, I got arrested for with my co-defendant. Um, I had two co-defendants, Moosey and uh, another co-defendant, uh, Get Low. But he went to, uh, he went to Sparfit. And um, it was a crime we really wasn't, we wasn't even um, guilty of. Or to be honest with you, this shit was crazy, bro. But um, we got, co- we wound up getting convicted of that shit. Um, and they and they and they sentenced me to two hundred thirty-seven. They sentenced my co-defendant to two hundred thirty-seven. And y'all ain't well, even do the shit. Nah, it wasn't even a crime committed, bro. This that shit is crazy. I'm a, I'm gonna have that in my book. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book called Arrested Development Dysfunction, and it's about my struggle. And I definitely got a a a, 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 a story to tell. And um. I definitely think the world could, could, could gain something from my story, but I, I'm gonna put that out soon. And um, I definitely gonna talk about that in there. Word, that shit was crazy. I ended up doing a whole seven years too. Oh. I, um, I had a, I was sentenced to a two and a third to seven, and I maxed out. I did every day of that shit. Mm-hmm. Word, matter of fact, I'm lying because I was supposed to max out on Christmas Day, so they 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 gave me a day. They gave me a day. I did I did I did um every day but a day of that shit. They let me home on Christmas Eve. You heard? That's crazy. Word, word. I did every day of that shit, bro. I came home with a chip on my shoulder for that. But we here to talk about right now. We here to talk about Rikers Island, right? The four building and shit, like. You know what I mean? Um, I, you know, dude started calling me wrong dude and, and on, on Rikers Island in the full building. That 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 name kind of kind of stuck with me from there. I really don't even know how that shit came about, to be honest with you. But I I just started jacking it and it stuck. You know what I'm saying? I I really never was um caught up in the name when I was young. I didn't like the name that my moms gave me, man. Even though as unique as it is, I didn't like the name that my moms gave me. So I was, I was, I was trying nicknames out like a motherfucker when I was a kid, man. Word, and, and you know, raw dude stuck with me in the fall building. It, it just stuck for me, man. But um, yeah, I came through. My first time that I stayed was in 1989. Um, I came through my first time, I, it was in 88. It, it, the funny story, I came through in 88. You know, check this out. I, I've been incarcerated, like, for a majority of my youth. From really, from like 13 to 40, I was in jail. Um, 
I was in Sparfit, all of that. So by the time I got the Rikers Island, it really was like T-Bone. I heard T-Bone blast. Shout out to T-Bone, man, my Browns villain. He said something about, you know, by the time he got the Rikers Island, he was already fighting and all that shit. It wasn't nothing to it. He wasn't really that scared. I was pretty much the same way. When I came home from one of them BFY bids, I, I remember my older brother being in the house talking about Rikers Island. Now, I got an older brother, shout out to Ike official, you know, he was repping before me, you know, so it was like, it was like a passing of the torch, pretty much, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of our youth went through that shit at this period because a lot of our big brothers, uncles, fathers was incarcerated, you know what I'm saying, it was like mass incarceration for blacks coming from in, in New York City at that time. You know that. It, it, they was they was they was really like on some just block them away shit, you know? So it was it was like pretty much all of us was like pretty much expecting to get locked up. Um I came home from Sparfield at one time and my I, I heard my brother and I, I don't know how long I was home, but I remember my brother and his friends in the room talking about Rikers Island and the phone and how tough it was to use the phones and shit. And I remember just sitting there just listening to the stories and shit about dudes getting stabbed and cut and all that old crazy shit. And I'm like, wow. It you know, it enthralled me. I was already from Brownsville, so I was I was used to the streets and you know the shit like that. I was already off the porch, but you know, the Rikers Island stories for a kid listening to that shit, it was like you know, hearing stories about gladiator school. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? And if you a young warrior and they make it, you know, it just it just riled my blood up. You know what I'm saying? So hearing them, you know, I think I said something about I wish a nigga would deny me from talking, you know, from calling my mama because one of them was saying something about yo, you can't even call your mom. My mother don't give a fuck. I was like, man, I wish somebody would deny me from, you know, trying to call my mom. And they was like, what you gonna do? And I and I remember telling them like, well, I'm gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you mean? What I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? And they was like, man, you ain't gonna do shit. Dudes got razors. Nah, you know, they try to, you know, because I was a shorty to them. So they try to, you know, try to shoot me down. But I remember in my mind thinking, like, I don't give a fuck what they say. Man. Ain't nobody denying me the phone. And it's a crazy ass, like, story to just even just to look back on and just say, but that shit stuck in my mind. So when I got the right Island, like, I was a monster for that jack. You hear me? I don't give a fuck where I went. I was getting on that jack. Anybody would tell you that was there, if I was in a house, I was on that jack. If the jack wasn't mine, I definitely had phone time. There wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about that from day one, you heard? I, 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 I made sure of that. But in 88, when I first came through, you could smoke. <laughs> right, Gazelle. I was in the clinic smoking, talking to my man, and somebody tapped me from behind, like, yo, bro, can I get a cigarette? I was like, yo, bro, don't be tapping me and shit. A few minutes later, somebody else gave him a cigarette. A nigga tapped me again. I went upside his head. Woo, 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 you know? And then the, um, and then the, um, the police popped on me. I, you know, I got to some shit with the police. They fucked my eye up. And then they sent me to Kings County Hospital and a homegirl from my hood was there doing something in the hospital. And I said, yo, you know, I'm on Rikers Island. It's crazy. She got me some razors and shit. I cut my new balance, the sneak of the tongue, and I stuck them in my tongue. And they sent me down to two lower. When I got back to the island, um, Nut was down there from LG. I knew Nut from DFY, though. Um, Peanut was a uh, He was a friend of mine already and shit He was a friend of my man June Shout out to June, rest in peace um, Melvin Kirkland and shit, that was my man But he was a, he was him and um, Nut was in They was in I think um, Lincoln Hall And I was in Pius 12 and they used to bring them To our camp And shit in DFY to play Baseball and shit and what what um I, somebody said something about Nut being a big brolic kid. He was the, he definitely was. He was always a young, big brolic dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um and I remember him being my man, friends with my man. So when they came, when they used to come over to play baseball, that's how we got to know each other. So when I came to Rikers Island and um on, in '88, I met him. Matter of fact, actually, I did. I met him in Sarah J up at Sarah J again before I got arrested and then when I seen him in Rikers Island we was real familiar with each other already and Nut 
Nun had a nice little, you know, he had dudes who respect him in, a, in too low. So when I came down there, it was pretty much my eye was fucked up. I really didn't have to fight. Nut was good. He was like, yo, bro, what up? Yo, shit, dude. He didn't call me dude. He called me wrong. He's like, yo, get on the phone. You good? Whatever, you know? Uh, Farrell, Fee was down there. Shout out Fee from, um, uh, from Linden. Uh, Green Eye. Um, who else was there? I think Nostrand Avenue, N.A. Rock, Eugene Harris, um, Thompson was down there. It was a few dudes down there. Good dudes, solid dudes, but it was crazy, man. Dudes was getting cut down there every day. I went, I went down there, and I, like I said, I didn't even have to do that. I wound up going home, and then I came back to Fort Warren for with my co-defendant, and that wound up happened to be how I wound up staying. And um, I ended up staying from 89, I think, from... December 89 until about April 1991. What type of garments dudes was rocking in 89 on the island? Well, when I came through in Rikers Island, you could still wear your clothes. You could still wear your jewelry. Um... Dudes was wearing whatever they was wearing in the street. We was wearing whatever we was. They was wearing in the street. Our family could bring us sneakers. The fort building was like that. Shit was like that. Shit was like high school, man. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to be honest with you, the shit was like high school, and and it, it, it was it was it was it was like high school without the without the 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 the, the rules of society. You feel me? So, and actually, you know, the funny shit was like. I always was an intelligent kid. Like I never really was a uh, ignorant kid. Like I was in in as far as reading, writing, and all of that shit. I excelled. I, I never was a dummy, but I did dumb myself down in the streets because when I was young, it wasn't cool to be. It wasn't cool to be smart. It was cool to be tough. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, being that I was tough as well. You know what I'm saying? I use my brains over. I use my brawn over my brains. You know, because I felt I thought that that would accept, make me more accepted. And kids love to be accepted. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't no different from any other kid in that sense. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, I approach I approach life in that sense. And then coming from Brownsville and seeing the things that I was seeing, you know what I'm saying? You know, violence wasn't nothing new to me. Crime wasn't nothing new to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was just I just took to this shit because it was natural to take to it um i was i got into some shit and, and I, i'm gonna put that in my book but i i got into a lot of shit when i was out in the street when i was young i got into some shit in school or whatever after i got out of dfy and um uh the i think it was the dean and the principal told my mother that being that I was 16 at the time, they couldn't kick me out of school, but they didn't want me in the school no more. I was at Tilden, and they was like, listen, the guy behavior is, you know, often but we don't want him in here, but you got to sign him into an alternative suit. Would you be willing to do that? My mother asked me, you know what I'm saying, did I want to do it? I said, yeah, because I figured, you know, an alternative school, I'll be getting out of school soon. So they signed me out. They sent me to Linden Learning. When I went to Linden Learning, when I got there, the lady was like, yo, let me give you pre GD pre GD test to see what your scores is. I passed that shit with flying colors. So she was like shocked, like, yo, you know, like you smart, like you ace this shit. Like the scores you got on every subject, they only had like I think five classes, whatever the classes that whatever the subjects on the GD was, that's what they, they taught in the school. Math, what you know, English, whatever right and you know what i'm saying but she was like being that you pass all the shit you really don't have to come in so i was at that point in my life i was just a 16 year old kid without school i told my mother i didn't have to go to school no more i go i, I go she gave me a date when i had to take the test it was a few months later she was like yo take the test on this date you go to school or uh, uh, a school in manhattan called whatever i forget the name of it but she was like yo just go there on this date and take the test so i told moms yo you know i don't gotta go to school no more i just gotta go here and she was like oh for real oh my god but you know she was working at the time so she was like all right well find something to do and that was that was crucial at that time for 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 the way my life turned out it was it was just bad i wound up getting arrested 
with my co-defendant, like I said, we didn't even do the crime. I wound up getting arrested with my co-defendant a little while later. And then while I was on Rikers Island, I called home and my mother told me that my GED came in and I passed, you heard? So being that a lot of dudes off the four building, it was mandatory because the, in the four building, you gotta go to, you gotta go to school from, uh, the, you only stay in the four building if you from 16 to 18, right? There was a few dudes that actually did play adolescence, but it wasn't no 22 and 23 year olds in the four building. The, the, the oldest, I think, Shushan was playing that shit till he was about 19 or 20 for a little while. And I don't know too many other dudes. OG Mac was playing adolescence. He was older than all of us when he came through. Omar, he was playing adolescence at the time. I don't think too many other dudes was playing adolescence. I was born in 1972. So in 1989, I was 17. I turned 18 and 1980 i mean uh, 1990 you know what i'm saying and um and uh 91 i was i think i was still 18 i turned 19 in september of 91 you heard mm -hmm. so i left i left the four building in april uh, uh uh 1991 i was still 18 you heard so I was down there with all the rest of the dudes that was my age, but I didn't have to go to school. You understand what I'm saying? So I was going up to the school building trying to talk to the teachers. They was giving me rhythm too. I had on my jewelry. I had on all my all my clothes. You know what I'm saying? I, I was just having fun at the time. You know what I'm saying? In the fall, it was a big recreation to me. I could fight. It wasn't no real threats. And anybody coming at you with a razor, they got to know how to fight. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Like, I beat a lot of dudes up coming at me with razors. They might have cut my shirt or something like that, and I lumped their ass up. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? You got to know what you're doing unless you sneak, unless unless a motherfucker catch you sleeping or sneak you. And I, and, and I wasn't giving dudes my back. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah. Pretty much. That was that was that was pretty much it for me, man. Down there. It was just recreation for me, bro. You heard? Yeah, who else was in the building when you came through at that time that was really like running the full building when you came um, in? The first I'll give time? you a props. I don't wanna make it seem like I'm bigger than nobody, but ain't nobody was bigger than me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was down there. Yeah, I'm keeping real with you. And I'm talking about the whole full building. I wasn't bigger than nobody, but wasn't nobody bigger than me. That's how, that's the way I looked at it. You feel me? Mm. That's the type, that's how I was on it when I was in there the whole time I was there. You feel me? And, and like I said, I'm going to say this again. It wasn't nobody. If I, I, I wasn't bigger than nobody, but wasn't nobody bigger than me. So, you know, and, and you know, the Brooklyn and Bronx thing, I had friends from the Bronx. I had friends from Brooklyn. I had, I had friends from Queens. I was pro real nigga. You know what I'm saying? For, for lack of a better word. You know what I'm saying? I was pro real nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So if I met you and I felt your energy, then we was good. If I met you and I didn't, fuck you. That's how I was on it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, you know, I wasn't biting my tongue with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, a lot of dudes get on here, act like they ain't take no L's. You know what I'm saying? You know, I searched my memory. I, I, I definitely ain't take too many. If I did take any and any of the L's that I took, it, they was honorable. You understand what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'll give you a for instance. I got a good friend of mine from the Bronx named Germ, right? And Germ was putting work in. Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard too many dudes talk about Germ concerning the Bronx, but he was a dude from the Bronx that was official. And, you know, he was putting work in. Everybody respected him. You know what I'm saying? saying? But he was a good friend of mine. Um, he let me hold a chain one day, right? And this was like, baby, we had like four, five, six months in the full building at the time. And you know what I'm saying? We was running around thinking we running shit. You know what I'm saying? But it was a different temperature with the with the with the adults and all that's like HDM. They was playing with swords. We was playing with razors, you know what I'm saying? And fighting and shit. You understand what I'm saying? It was a different temperature. It wasn't too many knives and shit in the fall building at the time. You might get a few, a couple of nice little weapons, but for the most part, dudes was getting cut. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we was playing with. Cause it was harder for us to move like that because they was on our body. 
You understand what I'm saying? That they, the type of the respect that they, they 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 give the adults, they wasn't giving us because we were still kids. You understand what I'm saying? And they was adults, grown ass men, the CEOs they had in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas was getting bitch slapped by the police. A lot of motherfuckers wasn't coming on here and talking about that. Police was whipping niggas ass. Four Main was known for that shit. They was whipping niggas out. That nigga bar. That the, the dude said, um, uh, uh, sunset, um, that you know the Brooklyn and Bronx started because the police started it. He was working for me. He was slapping fire out niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? I see, yo, every nigga ever slap me like that. I'm gonna cut the blow they fucking head off. I never would have went for no shit like that. A lot of dudes was going for you. You hear what I'm saying, bro? The yeah. police was really violating niggas back then. And, and everybody would tell you, like, the Ninja Turtle niggas, they was fucking niggas up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us wasn't even built yet when we went up north and was working out and all that shit. Yeah, so we was skinny ass little kids. I probably was like a buck 30, buck 40 back then. You know what I'm saying? Like 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So to us, it, 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 it was it, it was recreation, like I said, but it was a lot of kid shit that was going on. But nevertheless, at the time, it was a lot of hitters down there and shit. My man Germ had let me hold a chain one day, and I had a, 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 a probation case that I used to go to Manhattan court for. So I go to court on this day with the chain on instead of me, you know what I'm saying, or uh, 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 zipping up my mouth because I had the fila, so I had the fila suit on. I, I the matter, oh, did I have the fila suit? I had the New Balance suit on, I think, and some New Balance. Regardless of what I know, I had a a sweat suit on, and I had to sit wide open, chain all out. Now I'm in criminal court with all the niggas. These niggas, they putting us on the bus with niggas coming from HDM. These niggas coming from C73. These niggas is grown ass men. I see these niggas scheming on me. Like I said, I had to, I had to raise. I, I didn't say this, but I had a raise in my mouth. But I was handcuffed to a dude from Harlem that just coming through and I let the police when they handcuffed us I let them handcuff me with my right hand now, I'm right handed it's hard as hell to swing an ox you know what I'm saying when a nigga on point is much even with their best hand but to swing it with my left even though they didn't know that I was it wasn't really gonna be effective you feel me mm. so nevertheless though I'm instead of I seen them scheming on me because I'm at the top of the steps with this nigga and there ain't nowhere to go up where they got us locked at there's nowhere to go up everything up there is locked you understand there's only way to go is down and it's a line of all adults in front of me all these niggas looking up like oh bear meat you heard so I'm, <laughs> I'm at the top of the steps like wow instead of me just zipping up my jacket spitting the razor out like yo let's get it fuck it you know what I'm saying I just I kept I kept the jet the jacket zipped down like yeah come and get it and they came to get it you know what I'm saying the leader of the crew was a light skin nigga with fronts in his mouth that's all I remember it could be my man to this day to be honest with you I done met so many niggas since then I don't I didn't know him at the time and then it was wasn't enough time for me to even retain his face to remember this dude, you heard? But I take my hat off to the dude. He probably gonna hear the story right now and he gonna know for a fact that it's real and he tipped his hat to me. You understand what I'm saying? Because they rushed me, they got me. But they, they really didn't rush me. They just all pulled out knives. They were swinging the knives. I'm swinging the razor and in the midst of me trying to get not to get stabbed or whatever and trying to keep this stupid nigga that's handcuffed to me from running up the stairs because it ain't nowhere to go. I'm like, nigga, kick. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> stupid ass. I'm fighting these niggas and this stupid nigga. The light-skinned nigga with the fronts yapped my chain from the side. Bah, he got it. Once he got it, he slid through the crowd, slid through the front. He got what he came for. But he was the orchestrator of the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him because I respect it. He made an animal out of me with that shit. You heard? <laughs> that like I word, bro. He made an animal out of me with that shit. I keep it real with you. But you know, cause at the time, like I said, I was a young, you know, you I was said, a young. You said that was, that was a Brooklyn criminal in the staircase when no, he was. This was in Manhattan criminal court. You heard? 
Oh, well, I, I just for a reason, for some reason, I just know that light skin nigga with them fronts was from Brooklyn. You heard? Cause the whole way he walked straight at that crowd and got that chain. It's just some shit that a Brownsville nigga do. You heard? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the nigga. I don't know who he was, but I respect it. Like I said, they got me. He got me from the side. He popped me while this other crackhead nigga, faggot ass nigga, was he was OD and wasn't getting nothing out of it. But you know how one nigga. Yo, she shorty up there with the chain. Yo, we gonna get this nigga. And he probably was scared of the light skin nigga, hoping they don't pop on him. So he was really OD and trying to stab me. <laughs> so I'm watching this faggot nigga trying to, you know, get him and some pop me from the side. Bing, he got me. You know what I'm saying? Because it really wasn't nowhere to go in the staircase. He got me. So once the police, you know, the police came for all the commotion, and they like, oh, you fucking adolescents always start trouble. Let's go. They telling us. To the front of the line. Now I see the light skin nigga up in the front tucking my chain. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? The rest of these niggas, I see them tucking knives, all this shit. They tucking the chain thinking I'm going to tell yo, this nigga got my chain or whatever. You see what I'm saying? He's just hoping I don't do that because he don't know me. You know what I'm saying? So now, I'm saying to myself, ain't no way I could go through this line, all these knives. I'm thinking one of them niggas probably going to hit me. I was so mad anyway. I didn't give a fuck. So as the police is trying to escort us to the front of the line, I'm saying, fuck the light skin nigga whatever the, uh, the crackhead nigga that was OD and trying to stab me I just jumped on his fucking back and tried to rag his stupid ass you heard I, I ragged him I got him this is a little straight like I said it was in my left hand and I was still handcuffed to the other nigga so I'm pulling this nigga on, at the same time I jump on his nigga back I scratched I didn't really get the nigga like that but that shit caused that somebody pushed. I don't know how that shit happened. But we, me and this stupid nigga I'm handcuffed to start falling down the stairs. Somebody kicked me in my face. Boom. Well, I ain't even gonna hold you, homie. Lights out me, you heard? I got to the bottom. So the Manhattan nigga was still cuffed to you? Still cuffed to me, yeah. The other adolescent, yup. And he fell Boom, down somebody. with you? Yeah, he, I put that nigga down with me. Everything, word. <laughs> all the way to the bottom, bro. Them niggas must have been pushing and kicking. I don't even know. By then, I was drugged out. Because somebody kicked me hard. That shit dazed me. I don't know. By the time we got to the bottom or whatever, po more police down there. They put grabbing us, throwing us against the shit or whatever. They uncuffed me. Uh, from this nigga, whatever they got the razor too. That shit fell. I remember the razor falling out my fucking hand. Boom! They got the razor, all that shit. So they uncuffed me. They get the crackhead nigga. I scratched or whatever. Take that nigga to the hospital. I remember them taking all the adults. They had me to the side, handcuffed by myself at first, cause they had to bring all these niggas by first so they could bring me back up into the pens. So as they bring all these niggas on a on a on a bus and lock the bus, I ran to the motherfucking to the to the bus. I was fucking tight. I run to the bus and on the cage, but the cage is already locked. They in the back, sitting at the uh, on sitting on the um sitting at the. Uh, on you know on the bus and the and the chairs and shit on the bus and the light skin nigga is like you know I'm telling him homie I see you any you, you know what it is you know I'm a kid I'm young I'm tight I'm crying you know what I'm saying I'm a bad guy, you know <laughs> I'm tight you know what I'm saying I ain't saying nothing about the chain nothing and I'm just like nigga when I catch you you know what it is ah, he like ah, I respect that he laughing he smiling cause he know he, he did what he supposed to do but the police came they took me off the bus they put the young adolescent the shit from that and he put that nigga on the bus with them you know what I'm saying when they left I found this out later cause me they take me upstairs they put me back in a cage and shit the COs and all of them they fucking with me and shit they put me on a bus with the females to go back you heard <laughs> I was tight though I ain't give a fuck about none of that shit on another night I would have been happy for that you heard but this night I'm tight but I, I, what I didn't know, I found out later, they went to another building, I think Manhattan Supreme Court. They picked up my man, Scar Chess. They picked up him. Now, Scar Chess, he knew I went to court that morning, but he didn't really know, you know what I'm saying, me with the chain and that. He didn't know it was me. So when he got on the bus, remember the adolescent sitting in the front or the 
the, the, the uh, um, adult sit in the back. So they questioned him like, yo, you know a little slim nigga over there with you in a four building with a chain on? Ah, 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 ah. He like, nah, nah. But the light skin nigga is telling him, yo, man, tell that nigga I said salute or whatever, man. Little nigga went out like a G. You know what I'm saying? He official. Ah, this what he telling Scar Chest, you heard? The light skin so kid that orchestrated the whole shit? Yeah, that took my chain. He's showing him the chain and everything. He like, yo, this nigga, this is his chain right here. Slim nigga. Ah, ah, ah. But like I said, it was my man Germ chain. It was the, the girl that gave Germ the chain. I plugged him with the shorty I was fucking with. Her friend start fucking with Germ. Germ got a chain from her. I seen him one day. I was like, oh, that shit. Now, yo, let me hold that. He gave it to me. Going on a visit. I never, we wasn't in the same house. So I never got the chance to give them back the chain yet. They called me for court, I think the next day or the day after that. And I went to court with the chain and that shit happened. You feel me? Mm. So now the new, the dude showing Scar chest my chain like, yo, tell that nigga, little nigga here official or whatever, yo, ah, ah, but you know what I'm saying? You know, tell him he know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. You said he was, from eight, he was from eight, he was in HDM? He was in HDM. My cousin Bronson, I think you did an interview with him too. My cousin Bronson was over there at the time too. I was trying to get to get Bronson to like, yo, find this nigga for me. <laughs> but nah, that shit ain't even happened. But never, nevertheless, but yeah, he telling Scar Chess, yo, ah, whatever. So Scar Chess, like, I right, went, when Scar Chess is in the pens with the kid from Harlem. They didn't bring me back to like 2.30 in the morning. I'm, I'm on the bus with the females sick. I'm like, damn, I hope, you know, this dude is still there, the dude that was running, cause I, you know, I gotta get out some aggression. I, you know, you feel me? So I get back and the dude ain't make the count, man. He's still in the pen with Scar Chest, you know? And whoever the dude is now, I know you probably from Harlem, cause he, you know, he had on the, Fatigues, the you know the uh, army, for you know the the, the green and the, the grip beef and properties, or you know what I'm saying like yo, whoa, he looked like a nigga that was out there getting money, homie, using something. He know the steal. You like yo, homie, you post a fort. Like come on, I was smoking weed with this nigga all day. Who does that? You know what I'm saying? I was already established in a full building. This to show you how what type of nigga I was. Like I done did some bad shit, but for the most part, my heart was was in the right place with most niggas. Like I came in the pen with this nigga, he was all scared, yo. I never been on the island before. I was like, yo, homie, just fight. You know what I'm saying? You gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? Just fight. Nigga try to take something from you, just fight. Yo, here goes some chips, here goes some cookies, huh? Here goes some weed. You know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I was in a pen like this with that nigga all day. Man, niggas, we go to get chained up with these niggas. These adults pop. This nigga trying to run. Stupid ass nigga. It was scary. You feel me? So nah, so that shit had me tight. So when I came back and I seen Scar Chess and he telling me that shit, like, yo, the nigga said, ah, he was like, dude, that was you. I'm like, yeah, that was me, bro. He like, oh, man. I'm like, yo, you got it on you? He like, nah, I ain't got it on me. I'm like, oh, man, but we fixed him up, though. You know what I'm saying? Man, we fixed him up nice. Who, the, Harlem, even, the Harlem dude? Huh? Yeah, we fixed him up nice. I just had to get out some aggression, man. You know what I'm saying? But that shit, like I said, bro, when I tell you that shit made me a monster, bro, that shit was just the start of it. But um, Mo Dog, Dubo, uh, and a lot of niggas was in 3 low when I came back. All them niggas was on the gate like, yo, dude, yo, what's up, yo, you all right? Them niggas seen my face. That shit just changed me, bro. I ain't speak to nobody when I came. I just locked in. I think I told them niggas about that shit the next day. Like, yo, bro, niggas robbed me from a germ chain. It's like, whoa, it's like, yo, fucking adult niggas got me when I went to school. When I went to court, bro. You told that like to germ word. too? You got uh -huh. a chance to tell that to germ too? Hell yeah. Yo, bro, when I tell you that shit made me a monster, bro, look. Interview who you want to interview from 89 to 91. Ask anybody, nigga. Yo, it's a lot of dudes that cut a lot more dudes than me. But on the robbery side, on jury, nobody, bro. I promise you, I went ham after that shit. Pray, I'm... Yo, man, I, that's all I wanted after that. Anybody with jury, I'm trying you, bro. I didn't even care. If you, I didn't know you. I'm trying you, bro. 
Uh, and, and I don't want to spit no names. I don't want to dredge up a lot of bullshit. But a lot of these niggas talking that bullshit right now. Them niggas was giving me. I ain't even had to rob niggas at one point no more. Yo, bro, that's nice. No, do you like this shit? Like that, bro. Real shit. I got on it like that. I was going in adult houses. I was going in them niggas' houses, bro. I asked these niggas. I ain't tell. I ain't making up no stories. One famous story. Them niggas was coming from Chow. It was a dope house. Niggas was coming from Chow. I seen the nigga on it. I wanted to yap. I got on a line. Bro, niggas looking at me. I'm like, nah, I'm just trying to go up here. When they got to the door, hey, ah, give me that, nigga. <laughs> Yo, the whole house chased me back to Marty, you know? <laughs> I was on it like that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, Rock from the bump. He'll tell you he was a dope. He came to the building. And he official. I don't know what he's doing right now. But ain't he hats off the rock. Salute, Rock. I seen Rock. I had a chain on my neck. Me and Jerm was in the hallway one day. I seen Rock. I'm like, yo, Rock, what up? Like, I don't even I ain't even know his name back then. I so I don't even know why I said Rock. I just I just seen it. I just I said, big man, what up? You coming up to visit? You got some blood? He's like, yeah, I had a chain on my neck. I'm like, yo, this shit, you want you wanna buy this shit? He's like, oh yeah, that shit nice. He got up on me. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> I backed up, spit out the razor, that nigga pulled down a sword. You heard? <laughs> what you mean? He I had a chain that, on? That shit. You said he uh, had a chain on too? He had a chain. He had a chain. He had on some long shit. I was just showing him my shit, hoping that I he'd let me get up on him enough so I could yap him. So I'm like, yo, big man, what up? You coming off the visit? You got some 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 bug? He like, yeah. I'm like, what? I'm like, yo, yo, you like this shit right here? I'm holding my chain while I'm walking up on him. As soon as he got up on him, up, up on me, yeah, let me get that. <laughs> wow. That's how I was on it, bro. Niggas robbed me. Everybody ain't know my story, but that's what I was dealing with. I was an adolescent. I was a kid. In my mind, niggas robbed me from where I came up. That was what that was the profession from Brownsville. You feel me? So when I when I felt, even though it was an honorable loss, I still felt like I had to make up for that. You know what I'm saying? So that was the testimony of me. Like I never got cut before in my life. Like while well, a lot of niggas got cut while they was in a four, but I never got cut. But I always told myself if I get cut. Everybody gonna wear one. It's gonna become fashionable. <laughs> Real shit. I wasn't even bullshitting, bro. Like I, I was just going wild the fuck out because that was the nature of my spirit. I was not. I was. I was. You know what I'm saying? Like nah, nigga. And whatever niggas do to me, I'm doing that shit times a million. You feel me? So that's how I felt, bro.